Hi, I'm Mark Madursky with the National Motorcycle Museum and we're in Anamosa, Iowa at Vintage Rally 2015. It's a bike show, a swap meet, we got great dignitaries, Hall of Famers, motorcycle customizers, and a couple new exhibits at the museum. But right now we're going to do a little walk through the bike show where we've got about 55 motorcycles, Japanese, British, American, European, all kinds of good stuff, plus a special chopper show. And we'll show you some of the cool bikes that showed up today. I'm standing here with uh, Ron Finch, famous customizer from Detroit, Michigan. Ron, why don't you just uh, give us a little background uh, on your inspiration here with uh, this motorcycle, which I think you call it finicky? Yeah, and the reason I call it finicky, naturally, is it's got a lot of fins. Uh, the part that I kind of like uh, most is the extra fins on the shovel head motor. Um, this is the gas tank, it's five gallons, and it's, it's got fins there, got fins on the, the shock supports, um, fins on the grips, fins on the master cylinder, fins on the risers, fins on the headlights. Oh, there's a few more fins, by the way. How about the neck? I right. uh, got a, one or two. And then uh, you also got fins in the, on the axle spacers and fins on the engine cases, fins on the exhaust pipes. Hey, I'm getting tired of talking about fins now, you know. So I'm going to turn you back over to Mark. <laughs> Ron, how long have you been building bikes? Fins or bikes? Bikes. Oh, bikes. I've been a little over 50 years. Right. I started with bicycles. I had a Cushman Eagle. I had a Whizzer. I had a 52 BSA plunger frame and, uh, you know, KHKs and so on and so forth. And then you, you do some sculpture, too, like some, just some, some art sculpture, fine art? Yeah, well, I don't know how fine it is, but, you know, it's okay. All right. Uh, it's mostly motorcycle oriented naturally where I got spark plugs and different motorcycle parts. Um, I, what I do is I build it out of metal that I either find at garage sales or swap meets or you know wherever. Ron, thanks a whole lot for yep. bringing a bike out. Uh, okay, have a good one. time to get out the chamois. The National Motorcycle Museum, I, I guess more than anything we endorse original condition bikes, you know, machines that have been preserved you know, 75, 80, 100 years, never repainted. You know, maybe the rubber parts are replaced, foot pads, tires, of course, but some machines make it through. And we're looking at a 1926 Harley Davidson JD, almost 90 years old, and it's still got the original paint on it. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got this machine and how you feel about it? I picked it up in California about a year ago. Um, um, from a guy who had actually one leg. He rode around California his whole life and uh, I was able to pick it up. Another guy picked it up from him and I was able to get it off of him. But uh, nice bike, original paint, uh, does get a better than that. What are your plans with it? Just keep it the way it is and ride it. All right. Yeah. How, many, uh, how many do you see like this? How many JD's original paint have you come across? This is the first one I came across. You got one of the awards for preservation, right? American preservation? I got best American best, bike. Best, yeah. best American, all right. My 56 got uh, best preservation. Is that an original bike also? Original title, original bill of sale. Uh, guy was 86 years old and I was able to get it from him. And what model is that? That's the uh, 56 FLH. So it's the next to the last rigid. That's correct. That's, right. That's great. I'm standing here with Jody and John Gregory. Some of you remember, may remember John as one of the guys that invented, or the guy that invented the slipper clutch for drag racing way back when. Is a tuner for TC Christensen, helped build bikes and build TC's success on the drag strip. And that was back in the mid 70s, right, John? Yeah, 72 to 76. 72 to 76. So John's never put down his wrenches. It's his beautiful wife, Jody, and they put this bobber together. But it's Jody's inspiration. Jody made the choices. So, what do you, what do you, what can you tell us about, like how you did the fenders and the gauges, the color, the chrome, and stuff like that? Just give me a little bit of well, detail. Well, we first of all we picked it up at Davenport, Iowa. It was a pile of junk, pretty rusty looking. I just had this vision. I knew I wanted it red and black. I mean, we had it all powder coated. Took it all apart. I'm not quite done. I got two more little things I want to do to it, and that is my valve stems. Okay. Um, I love shoes. 
You love shoes? I love shoes. Okay. And I want to make, because they don't sell them, red high heels for my bell stems. To make it a little girly-ish. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for bringing out the bike. Bellisette's designs were somewhat of a throwback, or rather they didn't change their styling very much. You could be looking at a 1970 Velocet and you'd think you were looking at a pre-war machine. But it's great. I mean, look at the engine, the gear case down there, the shapes of the fuel tank, the headlight case. It's got the classic Smith's gauge. The fenders have got this beautiful ridge up the middle. If you look in the chopper story exhibit, you'll see that a lot of chopper builders like that look, but they were using it primarily as a rear fender. But they're just really handsome machines. It's got a generator and a magneto, still a magneto ignition. When most other bikes had already gone to uh, battery points and coil, possibly even electronics by then. But uh, we're really happy to get a, a nice turnout at this show and see great machines like the, the Velocet come out.